You're welcome. Thank you very much. So, um, I'd just like to talk about myself a bit so that you know that I'm not just talking to you from what I read. I have a background in a fisheries management. I really didn't know what to do. I was just doing all, all sorts of jobs because I actually wanted to work in the bank and that didn't work. So that kind of discouraged me. So, I mean, I didn't really know how else to go about it until someone told me that from what they've seen with the work that I do, which is why it's always good to add value, that I love to help people to succeed and that they think I'll do very well as HR professional. And I said, wow, I'm not a very patient person. So it doesn't matter. But you have the interest of people at heart. And so that was how I started my journey into HR. And so at first, I did an assessment. Where, what skills do I have that would enable me to work as a HR I said I needed, because I was a science, I was literally a science person. So I said I needed to start learning HR from the rock bottom. So I went to do a diploma in human resources management at the University of Lagos. Then people were asking me, why don't you just go in for masters? I said, no, which is where the area of knowing yourself, assessing yourself, and against your vision is very important. I said, no, I'm not going to start from uh, HR uh, for masters. I will go for the diploma so I can have a very good foundation because as a scientist, I'm, I'm, I was raised to deal with inanimate things, things that don't speak. So I finished my diploma, I went for my master's. When I finished my master's, the same people came and said, you know what, why don't you start your training organization? I said, no, I need to go and work in an organization where I understand how organizations really work as a HR professional so that when I'm consulting, I know what I'm supposed to do. Now, remember I said, um, I, I, I didn't have prior HR experience. And as at this time, I had worked in various, I had worked as, uh, a receptionist, I'd worked as a personal assistant, I'd worked in a school as a bosser, I'd worked as a, uh, for, uh, what do they call it? Is it not bosser? Uh, they call it a student affairs officer, yes. Then I now moved into customer relationship management. And so I knew that if I was going to move from customer relationship ma manager, I couldn't go and work as a HR officer. So I had to get the job as a HR manager without prior HR experience. And so this is what I did. Now, remember, both of them spoke both best speakers spoke about vision. So my vision was to become a HR manager and then become a consultant. And so I sat, what skills do I lack? I started reading newspapers, looking for job adverts for HR managers. Are you following me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are following me, ma'am. So I started looking for jobs. Okay. Yeah, I started looking for newspaper adverts. Now, that time, I didn't have a job. So I would go to Ikeja and stay on, under the bridge and read newspapers and try and see if I could get into to, to see what they were asking for. Then when I get back home, I would write all these competencies, the skills they were asking for. Then at that time, I couldn't afford to buy new books. I also went to the same Ikeja bus stop. They used to throw books on the floor. I went to get HR books, secondhand books. So we, all of us have a story. And I'll start reading. Then I had a, a younger friend. Who, this one is called about peer mentor who was uh, doing her inter, uh, Institute of Chartered uh, Secretaries of uh, Nigeria. So I, I photocopied her books. So I started reading about all those. Then we didn't have IT as we, as we had now, inter, internet uh, access. It was for the very few. Mm -hmm. So I had to do everything in black and white. So I photocopied and I started reading strategic management, people. I was just reading and reading, preparing for the day I would get a job. And, now, and I also enrolled in CIPM because I wanted to go in with the bank. And all these steps, I got a, a, a job that was paying me 35,000 naira a month. That was about 2002 or 33, 2003. That 35,000 naira, up till today, I don't even know how I survived, but I survived. Because then my focus, remember, focus again. My focus was to get that job. Anyway, I went for the first interview. I didn't do very well. I went back and I asked myself, what did I do well? I read up. So by the time I was going for the next interview, wow. I, was, I had read how to prepare for interviews, research the organization, know their motto, their mission, their mission, their values, know the, uh, the industry and everything. By the time I went for the interview, the MD said exactly, 
ask the wife, do you have anything? Because they run the company together. Do you have anything to ask her? The wife said, I don't have anything to ask her. Somebody has come to tell us all we do in organization. What question? That was how I got the job as a HR manager from customer relationship manager, having never handled a HR position at all. So, that was, and I did that for three years. And everything I did on that job, I had one thing in mind. I'm going to work in this job for a while. But by the time I'm 40, remember Mr. Dyer spoke about timing. And also Mr. I must have a time. I said, by the time I'm 40, I'm leaving paid profession to either be the MD of a company or start my own organization. And then once I started that job again, remember the issue of adding value every day. I started looking for ways to be trained as a consultant. I did one while I was working. And I, well, I did one immediately, I left work and one again afterwards. So everything came with a plan. Everything came with a focus. Everything came with, you know, daily adding value to myself. So I'd like to stop there to let you know that, I mean, I, I'm not just talking out. It's something that I have done. So I don't know if we want to start putting our questions out. If there's, but one of the first questions I can see here, um, is from uh, Mobolua. Why well, I've mentioned trusting to lead. What do you do when? What do you do when you don't trust some teammates? Do you report or try to get them out of your team? Wow. When you don't trust your teammates, what they're doing is it official? Is it affecting the job? Have you approached them to ask them why they are doing what they are doing? Now, when I say approach, I don't mean accuse. And I'm grateful that Mr. Uh, Yemi spoke about being assertive. That means you are asking in a way that the person knows that you are respecting them and they also respect you. So if it has to do with job and you have spoken to them, it will be good for you to say, look, Mobolua, I have spoken to you twice on this, and it seems that you don't quite understand. And this is affecting our team results. Let me know what we're going to do. And I always also encourage that when you make those kind of reports, to me, put it in black and white so that people don't say what you didn't say. And so by the time you are putting it in black and white, you want to ensure that whatever you have put 15 years down the line, you would be able to defend what you have put down. Did I help? Hello? Can you hear me? Mogolua. Okay, she's not here again. She's not in. Okay, any other question? Because that's okay. Dorsey. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is it that if you are in an organization where you were chosen to lead a team of two people based on technical skills, not on leadership skills, unfortunately, the team performs below average, not because the team leader is not technically skilled, again, but she was having issues with the team in terms of leadership and technical skills. Invariable, this results in fracas with her blood boss. Please, how can she manage this situation, or is it proper for her to leave the organization and start over in another organization? Well, uh, just see. Um, but I, if I get this, you are trying to say that you had an issue with your technical skills. The person had an issue with the person's technical skills in that team. No, man. Hello, man. Hello? It, yeah, I can yes, hear you. It's not about the technical skill. The person is good technically. But, based, but the person doesn't have experience based on leadership skill. But because the organization oh. saw that this person is good technically, deliver results quickly, okay, let's make her to lead a team of two people. So in the course of her leading the team of two people, she's having an issue with the people because they are not as good as her. Even when she taught them something, they don't catch up very fast. And they don't, even she has talked to them, encouraged them, is as if anything is not working. So invariably, she, this affects her jobs. So she was not unable to deliver. She performed below average. And because of that, her boss, so she now has so many issues with her boss, you know, then because she was also not ready for leadership position like that because anything that goes on in the team, no matter her effort to resolve it, 
it we still bounce on our back. So she is now looking for a way to manage the situation, or better, maybe she leave or and start over in another organization. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. That's a good one. Now, there are two ways that you can handle this. And I'm happy that the person recognizes that I don't have the required leadership skills. So there are two things you can do. You could go to your boss and say, I'm good technically, but I always advise people, don't wait for things to become very bad before giving your manager his feedback. Because if things get very bad and you begin to give your manager his feedback, they will believe it's because you're not performing. Remember I said feedback, not gossiping, not reporting. You are giving a feedback. Oh, Peju is good here, but she, I, it seems as if I'm not able to put her through here. Yeah, no, no, it's not the same. Dario is good here. Hello? Somebody is talking about nose mask. Dario is good here, but I cannot do this. So that's one area. The number two area is also to go to your uh, your boss and say, Sir, Ma, I, I am having a challenge here, and I'm thinking that you need to give me time. I would enroll on a training or I look for somebody who can mentor me in leadership skills. Then I, I hope I can pick up. Do you understand? So that's another angle that you can go. The third is if you feel you're too much under pressure, that even if they give you a remedial, you will not be able to perform. Then it may be good for you to look for another job. But mind you, the jobs are not very they're not there right now. So if it, if this is you, just I don't mind after this class, uh, you can send me a WhatsApp. And, uh, the moderator will give you to that we can talk. Okay, ma'am. But those are the three ways that I would handle what is happening. But I don't want you to lose focus. Don't allow don't allow circumstances and situations to push you. Because I have also been in that situation where I was not performing and my boss was not happy with me. And I was like, what, what am I doing wrong? Until, you know, like Mr. Both of them said, if you're if you're spiritual. And my eyes were open that it was pride that wasn't making me do very well. I felt that the job they were giving to me was below me. And I, I, I adjusted and I started doing very well. And not long after that, that job I felt was below me. I got a better job. Okay, ma. Have I answered yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, no more question on the WhatsApp. Uh, okay, this is Tobia Dibuki. I'm currently an admin and uh, an admin officer, and I have passion for people and helping people achieve their objectives too. I've taken several courses on HR management. I just enrolled for an MBA in HR. I want to change my career path to HR professional. What else can I do? How do I get my first HR job after three years experience in administration? Great. At least you've heard my story. Now, um, recently there was a lady who worked in Glow who approached me and said she wanted a job in HR. And I said, you worked in Glow. You're already earning about uh, 30, uh, 400,000. And you don't have prior HR experience. Then you must be willing to take a pay cut to start from there because not everybody would have the opportunity that I had. Because remember, by the time I crossed over to that job, I was already 30 something and I had almost 20 years experience working, but not in HR. So that experience, I had a very wide range of managing people. And so it helped me move into the role of a HR manager easily because I've managed people before. So my, my advice to you, Toby, is, any job you see as a HR person, even if it means a paid cost, take it. Now, second, HR is easier when you are working and you're going to school. So that as you are, and I'm happy that you're just doing your MBA, so that as you are being taught in class, you are trying to extrapolate what you're being taught and what is happening. Then you're not going to school for a specific case. You're going back to school because you want to acquire skills. And since I know that you're interested in this role, also, let's chat after this. So if I get jobs where they're looking for people without HR opening, in charge HR who, who don't really have HR uh, exposure, because in my company, I recruit people who just have baby certification and I help them train them. So I could also help you with that if you come with Thank very you. good uh, referrals. Okay. So I, ho I hope I've answered your question, Toby. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Okay. Ma, Chima. I have some questions. Chima. 
Okay. All right. Let me let me answer Chimazo. Then you can ask me the questions you have pent down. If one is having issues with ladies, as in the as a guy likes flirting a lot, I see this as a serious threat to the career progression of that person, especially in the role as HR manager. The individual might end up asking ladies for sex in order to give them a job. What is your advice to such a person, man? Wow. Mixed well, that kind of person, you may just advise the person. That's all you can do. If the person gets caught while they are trying to harass other women, you know, give them to their conscience. There's something we can really do about that. But if you think the person would like to speak to someone like me, I'm open. Okay, I don't care. I don't care. Your questions pinned down. I don't care. Hmm. Use moderators. I don't Amen. care. Moderator. Ah, this one is rubbish. God forgive me. Wow. That time. was harsh. I don't know who said that. Maybe they are calling high in the uh, main and uh, in the main uh, team. Anybody have any questions while I wait for her? Any questions that you'd like to ask? Because I don't see any questions here. Yes, Bimbo. Obunda Yimi, Dayini. No, ma'am. I'm enjoying this section already. I don't have any question right now, ma'am. Okay, blessing any question. Um, okay. Now let me let me while I wait for let me just ex, uh, expatiate on you know why at this level one of the things I would advise you to do is to do like what I call a SWOT because when you are building your career it's always important that you know what you have and what you don't have so that you know what you need to get to where you are going to can you repeat that can somebody tell me what I just said now. While you're creating your career, yeah, you, should, you must know what you have. Uh -huh. So you know what you need. Do it. So that you know what you need to do, you know to, do to, do to get to where you are going to. So that was what I did when I was going for my own job. I looked at my person. I remember I said I told that woman, I'm not a very patient person. Why? Because I like things to be done very well. And that's another thing that emotional intelligence helps you to solve. And so after a while, no it just occurred me that you know not everybody can be the way you are, and that is the love, the, the how God makes life very lovely. So don't expect everybody to be as fast as you are, as quick as you are, and as I can slog it out and can walk like a horse. Not everybody has that energy, and that's where emotional intelligence comes in. And then I didn't know what emotional intelligence was, but I got to know that you need just to be accommodating to accommodate people for who they are so i looked at my personality the kind of person that i am my personality i looked at my strengths and my weakness strengths meaning that the things that others that i have that separates me from people i'm a hard worker somebody was saying that on the that how do you motivate yourself to perform somebody was asking i think the person how do you motivate yourself to perform you must motivate yourself Make up your mind that there is nobody in this world who is interested in your, in your success except you. Your company is myself and I limited. So it is only you that will wake up in the morning and set targets for yourself. Nobody's because if you're like someone, those of us who do our own business, nobody tells you when to sleep or when to wake up. You know you have to wake up because you've got to meet the needs of your clients. And if you start having that mind now when you are working in an organization, it's going to be easy for you when you start your own business. So you check your strengths. What are the things that separate you from others? You check your weaknesses. What are the things that can easily trip you? That are open doors that that you know if you don't shut very well can just kick you out. And I saw mine as my being impatient with people, impatient with people who are weak, impatient with people who don't you know who don't measure up to what I think they should measure up. And I had to deal with that. I also saw my not having. Social, a social science background as a witness. And what did I do? I went, I, I, I studied more, I read more. What are the opportunities that I have? That's your, that's the O of the story. What opportunities do I have? Yes, I can be a HR uh, manager. I can train. I can be a counselor. What are the threats that I have? The threats that I have is that if I don't quickly, you know, get into the uh, consulting uh, job right now, 
maybe when I'm 50, and I don't want to start learning new ropes when I'm 50. So those are the opportunities. So uh, moderator is yes, you can ask us, ask me the questions. And then I can go back if okay. we still have more time. Okay, but someone has a question. Goodness, uh, goodness, I'll come Ma, back you to later. Ah, first. Yeah, go ahead. Answer goodness first, then I will. Continue. Can you please explain uh, your question, goodness? Goodness. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Goodness says, yes. I studied guardians and counseling in Unilad. I and currently to on YouTube. Huh? Yeah. And currently running my master's program, same department, same school. I'm currently working with FSCH and in my final stages in the professional course right. with CIPN. I have worked as an HR assistant and I would like more professional guidance and understand what I need to be more professional. Uh, I would not mind offering free services or attending trainings. Okay, good, uh, goodness, Sadiq. Please chat me on our uh, general chat afterwards, then we can work together. It's not something I need to ask you what you've done so that we can work together on that. Uh, please, some people are asking to be let into the session in WhatsApp group chats. Moderator, yes, I've seen please let them in. Them. I just okay. all right, moderator, ask your question. So, good, send me a message later. We'll talk. Okay. Okay, Moderator, now. over to you. How yeah. do I close the gap between now and next? That's my first question. Now and next. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so now I am where I am now. Mr. Dio said something about learning. I realized that for the last few about almost 10 years of my life, I've just been working. I read to work. I read to work. I have a training I read. I have a project I read. But I wasn't reading to add value to myself. So this year, I said this year was my year of adding value. I was going to expose myself to rapid learning and development. In fact, any training that comes that I don't have not had slides for before, I won't take it on because it takes time. So I can spend. The good thing about it is that I have I understand. Should you understand? I know where I'm going to. That was what Mr. Gaius said. Where am I going to? What do I need to get there? That is it. how to bridge the gap. You must, and there are self assessment um, instruments on like free ones that you can assess. They will tell you where you are strong and where you are weak and what you need to do. And thank God for this uh, internet thing. Udemy is, another, uh, Udemy is another platform where you can uh, get free training. So once that training tells you that, oh, this is the area, uh, the assessment tells you this is where you uh, need to. Uh, work on then go and read it then once you are, you, are, you, are, you are going for the training then you start asking like i said which job are you looking for always i tell people any job you are looking for even if it's the job of the person you are reporting to in the office look for the job advice study what they're asking for ask yourself do i have what it takes do i have what it takes do i have the skills do i have the experience if I don't have, how do I get it? Does somebody else have it who I can talk to, who can help me? You map your plan. When I was working then, I even like when I was used to train at um, after school graduate development center, AGDC, I, we should teach, I used to teach them on self awareness. And that means you must have a personal development plan. This is where I'm going to. This is what I need to do. This is how much I'm going to need. This is the time that I'm going to do it. This, has, this is what I'm going to use to improve myself. And you start working at it. And please, never ever always say you don't have money because you always have free YouTube videos you can watch, even for these things that we're talking about. Spend more money on data for grooming yourself instead of Instagram chatting and Facebook chatting. Those, and I'm, I'm that Mr. Yemi said so. Those things don't really add to you except you're adding value. As you are speaking, looking at their own. Hello? Hello, ma'am, with you, ma'am. Okay, uh -huh. so I hope I've answered that question. I have not. I'm always open, you know, after this time for us to discuss further. Okay, to my second question now. Yes. How do you balance your network? How do one balance is your network? Or how, how do, do I you, balance? I don't, do I, how do you build your network? Oh, okay, how do I build my network? Okay, great. Uh, our facilitator spoke about that. I even have said to myself that I need to also improve my own network in this new year. 
Yeah. Because for people like me, my network has been church, work, church, work. So this year I said, I must find other professional groups that I can join. Either online, which I did, as a HR group I belong to, even though I don't see those people, but at least I, I talk to them. Uh, the convener of this uh, meeting, I met him when I went for a job in Abuja a few years ago, and we have kept in touch. If I was the one who brought me to that HR group that I belong to now, there's a group that, so it's just about looking for groups that fit into your career uh, uh, vision. Okay. The ones that would help you. You can join them online, you can join them physically. That way. In fact, I'm, I'm even thinking, I, like, I mean, I'm happy they said this thing. There is a group I wanted to start, and that group I said it was just for HR people. So, those HR people, there are those who, like me, are very experienced. There are those that some of them I've mentored. I mentored them, and they are now HR managers. And then there are those who are really just starting. So, I wanted to bring all those three groups together so that we are all rubbing up. And so, if you are interested, once I start, we will close this uh, group. I will post it. So I'm going to start that because I was thinking of waiting till I have everything dotted and all the eyes crossed. So this, that's another way of networking. So on that group, you meet people and, you know, people will check you out. And of course, because this training is free, you need to also check you out. So I hope you all have LinkedIn uh, profiles because that's going to be another way of attract, uh, attach, I mean, Allow you into some of those because we want, to, we want to be sure about people's credibility. Yes, my so There's another that. question in the WhatsApp okay. on the WhatsApp group that I would like to read out now. What will you advise an entry level professional okay. who has been put on follow by his organization during this COVID 19 pandemic? Uh, look as we have for job opportunity or remain. Ah, look, look as well if you okay. can find. If you can find, look elsewhere. But if you can't, like Mr. Uh, Dyer said, while you are looking, for at this time should be time for you to be learning. If I, if you know how many free courses I registered for during this uh, COVID, uh, even when I told myself there is something wrong, I said, don't worry, let me just be registered. Let me just be registered. At least something will, something will, something will stick. And I've, been, I've benefited from a lot of those things I've registered for. They read books. If you are into HR, I have books, a book I can send to you because some of the, most of the books that we use in Nigeria are just books that just tell you about issues. But the foreign HR books will give you, will tell you, will take you through the topic and give you case studies, give you scenarios to think through. I can send that to this platform maybe tomorrow when I've rested. Do you understand? So look for a job. If you can find, if you cannot find, just keep, remember I say add value every day. In fact, that is what, let me speak your English. That is what that suits my belly very much. Eh? Add value every day. Read. And you know, like I said, I've not read very well in the past years. But this month, from uh, April up until now, I've read two books. Eh? <laughs> I'm so excited. I've read two books. And I'm not reading because I want to do the training. But I just told myself that this year, ah, I'm going to dig deep. Um, I must add value. And everywhere I go, it's as if it's being repeated. Okay, thank you. I hope I've answered that question. Yes, ma'am. The third question, ma'am. Are my needs yes. and my company needs aligned? Huh. The truth about it is that most of the time, our, company, our needs and the needs of the companies don't align. And what I always tell people when you're planning your career is to make up your, first of all, have your plan. So I tell people that there is the plan of, uh, I want to go and do my master's, but I don't have money. So any job I am doing now is to raise money for master's. So you know you're working for money. You are supplying money and you are saving money. The next one is, I have needs, but this company, in this company, I don't think I, it's going to meet my needs. Now, you need to be very, very careful. Because see, most of the time, particularly uh, generation X, uh, Y, and Z, we, we, we don't think deeply before we take decisions. At times, a company may not be meeting your needs, but it's just a leveling ground. I tell people, I say, you know what? If I don't have a job, I can't think because I'm always worried about how am I going to buy internet, how am I going to buy this, how am I but if I have a job where they pay me fifty thousand naira, I can buy Indomie, I can buy recharge card, 
then I, am, I now have the mindset to think. So I, having a job, first and foremost, helps you to be balanced, except they are harassing you there. So you need to now make up your mind. What needs are you looking for? That company that you are going to, are you sure they can provide the needs that you want? Are you sure? So if it is a matter, I will say, rather than say needs, I will say values. If a company's value is against mine, for instance, I mean, I, I, you work in a company where they're telling you to lie. That one, you must make up your mind whether it fits your values or not. But if it's about your career, then you look like it's a stop gap. And whatever you're going to next, you must be sure that that place can also meet those things. However, you can also go to a place where you create, you, are, you also create an environment that helps you meet those needs. You're working, you can ask your boss, is there any other thing that I can do for you, sir? That is asking outside of what you normally do. So if the man has a or the woman has projects, she brings you on, you learn skills. So for you to even say your needs, what I, I do outline the needs that you wanted, that you want, excuse me. So you must answer that question. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Okay, okay there's a uh, question uh, in the chat room. Ma What is your advice to young HR managers who are coming up in the industry at this challenging time where the future of work here is here about without being overwhelmed? It's still the same thing Mr. Ayani said. You know, you, when I was get, going to the HR uh, fora, it was more about strategic HR. Strategic HR, you must be an administrative expert, you must be a business partner, you must be a, a, a specialist. And okay, we dive into it. Now, it's for you to just pick up the Every advert for HR manager that you see, what are they asking for? And then apart from that, you also have to go on to, on, uh, to the, uh, LinkedIn. Who are the HR influencers in Nigeria and outside of the country? At times they list them, you can follow them. They start talking about these things. But mind you, when you follow people abroad, like what happened when we were discussing about the issue of politics in the office, Rather than the one for the UK, is it from here in Nigeria? You must ensure that whatever, whoever you are following, what they are teaching you is applicable. And they cannot be preparing for people to be applicable for Nigeria tomorrow. So I don't think that any challenging time that we are in is opportunity for greatness to be unleashed in us. The truth is about is that none of us ever knows what we can do until we put ourselves into that situation where the best comes out of us. I think that even asking that question, you are poised. Like I said, I'm ready to follow people up after this, just that it has to be at my own time. And I don't like, I don't like typing on WhatsApp. So if you want us to talk, you have to be in chat on WhatsApp. You tell me, I tell you, you call me, send me a text, I send you a time, we fix a time that we can talk. And if it is possible for plenty, we fix a Zoom meeting like this and we all have a chat. And then we're just encouraging each other and we're you know, supporting each other to do along the way. But I can tell you that, you know, it's not as bad as they are painting it. It's in your mind. For instance, now, when he spoke about the issue of resilience, yesterday, I was going to call my sister-in-law in Canada that we should do a, a webinar together on resilience. And the moment he said, I just said, I didn't call her yesterday. I said, I was going to call her now. I'm being reminded later that people need to be resilient. I have to be resilient when I went for that data. And you there, if you're there, say, aha, aha. Aha, aha. Okay, if I uh -huh. say, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see everybody's face. Put on your, even if you have not had your bath, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Let me see your face. Okay, you know, when I was looking for that job, okay, me, when I was looking for that job, <laughs> let me tell you, that's why spirituality is very, very important. Okay, I can see you. <laughs> Spirituality is very, very important. God told me, he said, go and sit at home, they will call for you. <laughs> if I don't go, you know, so I can see your face. What will people say? If I don't go and look for a job, hey, hey, they will say that I'm doing, I'm being foolish. <laughs> I beg, let me enter, let me go and look for a job. That's how I went to go and look for a job somewhere. <laughs> when I got there, the man looked at me, he said, Madam, 
Why are you just coming now? You are too old. You are too old. Nobody can employ you now. Hey, but when, anytime, if you have any small fish, huh? Yeah, oh. your small down. job in the office. Anything small, we just give to you. Maybe we have like a project. You just help us be feeling for. Hey, hey. I was in Okwawo in Victoria Island. I cried that day. I shed tears. You know when somebody tells you to your face that you are old to make a change in your life? And, and the, the Holy Spirit told me that who sent you? I told you to And I went to see Tattoo. I left my job in August. I started the next job, December 7th. Oh, no. What did I say? December 7th. So at times there will be challenges, but you need to hold on. For instance, I didn't tell you this. When I was in the university, I got in the middle, I left the uh, secondary school. I failed in my first year. I repeated for this. The moment I repeated, I said, I can never leave this university without anything less than a two one. Because that repeating got to me. I never failed in my life. And you know what? I got a two one, but I was just point one first of first class. So if I told myself I was going to make a first class, what would have happened? <laughs> Made a first class. Can you see resilience? You must believe in yourself. So even though I repeated, I know why I repeated, and I had to adjust. It. So I hope that answers that question. Any other question? Thank you, mom. Goodness, I've not seen your face. No, 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 no. I said it looks like my story. You just said your story like my story. I remember when I was That's in goodness. university. I had good, yes, goodness. I did diploma. Okay, please let's move. Apart from goodness, let's move. There is a noise at the back. Maybe somebody has put on a, 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 a Okay, goodness, go ahead. I said, I remember when I was in the university, I had, yeah. um, I had to repeat diploma twice. And there's this um, diploma course you do in University of Lagos before you can move yeah. to 200 level. So I had to do diploma yeah. twice. And it was, I was bitter because my friends were already in 300 level, they were already in 400 level. And I told myself, I wasn't going to do that university with nothing less than 2 1. When I got to 300 level, I dropped to 2 2. One thing, one thing, I dropped to 2 2. I was like, no, 2 1. So my final year, first semester, I started struggling. I was in 3.4. I remember I would go from room to room, all my friends' room, go there read. Reading, discussing. So my friends used to, they just look up to me a lot. So instead, I, I I wouldn't say I don't know the course. I'll say yes, I know it. So instead, in the process of saying yes, I know it, we are discussing it together. And then at the end of the day, I learn more. We learn and we go to the exam. So at the end of the day, I finished with two one, and I'm back there for my master. So it's been it's actually a very his resilience is very important. There's a noise at the background. Please, there's a noise at the background. No, can you please? Okay, mute everybody.